good Thursday morning to you, Pastor Chris Hoy of Desert Springs Covenant Church here on the second day of Lent on this Thursday morning. So as we begin today, let's start uh, in just sort of a prayerful repose by the suggestion in the devotional that I wrote is, is to just kind of massage the palms of your hand, take a moment to just enter into God's presence. Take some deep breaths. And if you want to, you can pray with me. Lord God, we thank you for this day. We pray that you would help us to center on you in this time. Focus on your word. To hear from you during this season of life. In your name, Lord, we pray. And if you couldn't see that real well, you don't have the devotional to know what I'm referring to. I'm just sort of massaging the, the palms of my hand with the opposite thumb and taking deep breaths. It's just a way to kind of center oneself and to, it, you know, it feels good. It's calming. So hopefully now we're in a spot where we can hear from God's word. Again, we're, we're taking a look at traumatic triumph and today's devotional is entitled Second Chances. We're reading from Jonah chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. So if you have a, a different version in front of you, that'll be there'll be a few words that'll be different. So Jonah 3, 1 through 10. Then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh, and I will deliver the message I have given you. This time Jonah obeyed the Lord's command and went to Nineveh, a city so large that it took three days to see it all. On the day Jonah entered the city, he shouted to the crowds, Forty days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed! The people of Nineveh believed God's message, and from the greatest to the least, they declared a fast and put on burlap to show their sorrow. When the king of Nineveh heard what Jonah was saying, he stepped down from his throne and took off his royal robes. He dressed himself in burlap and sat on a heap of ashes. Then the, kings, then the king and his nobles sent this decree throughout the city. No one, not even the animals from your herds and flocks, may eat or drink anything at all. People and animals alike must wear garments of mourning, and everyone must pray earnestly to God. They must turn from their evil ways and stop all their violence. Who can tell? Perhaps even yet God will change his mind and hold back his fierce anger from destroying us. When God saw what they had done and how they had put a stop to their evil ways, he changed his mind and did not carry out the destruction he had threatened. Here's uh, a reflection on the, on the word. In coming to speak to Jonah a second time, God is giving him a second chance to fulfill his calling and obey God's direction. The message hasn't changed at all, and perhaps Jonah hasn't changed that much either, but he obeys. And that should be an encouragement to us if we think about it. Jonah is given a second chance, and while he obeys, he doesn't much care for what he sees God doing. The Ninevites were notoriously brutal and cruel in their imperial ambitions. They had been the cause of much suffering. Jonah had reservations about giving this pagan nation a chance to repent and to encounter the God of Israel. The prophet Jonah, who had himself been given a second chance, was extended grace by God, and he wanted no part of seeing Nineveh getting a second chance. It disturbed his sense of justice that, and righteousness to see God you know, change his mind and relent, not carry out the destruction that he had threatened. Now, wounds from the past can affect our present response to themes of justice, forgiveness, and mercy. Extremely heinous acts of trauma per perpetuated by others, or, or even by us, seem to be outside the scope of what is reasonable for the Lord to forgive. A 
thankfully, grace and mercy are not attributes of God that are defined, defined by what we deem reasonable. God is patient with us and others when it, when it comes to our acceptance of the repentant. The change in our thinking and behavior doesn't have to be either immediate or perfect. Jonah certainly wasn't. While imperfect, Jonah obeyed. When given another chance to follow God's lead, he stepped out and delivered the message he was given. Just as we have experienced God's grace, we have an obligation then to extend it to others. Remember today, a gracious God gives second chances. Other passages for contemplation are Psalm 51 and Romans 1, 1 through 7. May God bless you this day.